how was Abraham saved? It's taken from Romans chapter 4, verses 1 to 8. We want to speak concerning God's plan of salvation for the scattered nations of the world that is through a special nation called Israel that will bring forth the Saviour of the world, Jesus Christ. What was God's plan to save fallen mankind? Well, God's plan was to make a nation. And through the nation will come a man, the man who is the Son of God. And he will be the Saviour of the world. And through this nation, who will be the witness and the Saviour that will come from it, this witness will spread to all the nations of the world. And this is God's plan. And Abraham was the father of the Jewish nation. In Genesis chapter 12, the Bible tells us how he was called of God to come out of the Earl of the Chaldees, right, modern-day Iraq, in order to come to Palestine, right, to uh, the place where God would give and make promise to him, uh, a descendant, a land. And he would be the father of the nations. And how can we explain uh, that uh, of Abraham's faith, how was Abraham saved? Abraham was saved uh, uh, through his descendant, Jesus Christ, the Son of God that will come in the flesh. And so the Lord wants us to see and understand the plan of God in salvation. Although Abraham was a great man whom God used to bring forth the Saviour, he was not saved by any merits that he had before God. Abraham was a great man in the sight of the Jewish nation. He was the father of the nation, the one who began that nation. And yet, Abraham was a sinner like us. He was also saved by faith when he believed God. What did Abraham believe? Well, Abraham believed that through his descendant will come the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that is the knowledge that God uh, gave to Abraham. And Abraham believed, right, believed that there will be uh, that descendant will, that will come through him that will be the saviour of the world. And so the Apostle Paul explains it in 1 Timothy 3.16 when he says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Jesus testified that although he is descended from Abraham and yet he preceded Abraham, can you understand this logic? Right? He is a descendant from Abraham and yet he preceded Abraham. Right? Jesus says unto them, Verily, verily, John 8, 58, I say unto you, before <clears throat> Abraham was, I am. He says, before Abraham came into existence, before Abraham was born, right, Jesus uh, says that I, I am existing already. So how can you understand uh, the Christ that is to come in the flesh many thousand years later? Right, to be the son of Abraham. But Jesus explained uh, that this is only possible because 
Jesus is God. That Jesus is God. Abraham was not saved because he obeyed God's instructions to be circumcised in the flesh. Nothing of what Abraham did gained him any merit before God to justify his salvation. In fact, Abraham was saved because he believed in God's plan of salvation through the man Jesus Christ, who is God himself. So this is the great truth that we declare to the world. All men must humble themselves before God to accept this glorious way by which they can be saved. So, you know, this gospel that we give to you right, uh, is a message of salvation that God brings to us, right, how it can give you peace and joy in your heart. Uh, therein lies the power. If you have believed, then you would experience the greatness of the power of God in the person of Jesus Christ. So, here, as we think, right, Paul was writing in Romans 4, 1 to 3, concerning how Abraham was saved. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found? For if Abraham was justified by works, whereof he hath he has whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. You see, Abraham looked forward to the Messiah to come. Right? Messiah hasn't come yet. It's going to come many, many generations later. Right? Jesus Christ is going to be born out of the loins of Abraham. And it's going to be many, many generations later. But this was the promise of God right, to Abraham that the Messiah, the Son of God, will come through his descendant. And he believed that. That bought him his salvation. That gave him his salvation. And for us today, how can we be saved? How are we saved? We are saved because we believe right, in the Messiah that has come 2,000 years ago. That Jesus Christ, the man who came in the flesh 2,000 years ago, who lived in Nazareth, is the Son of God. And that is what God wants us to know concerning how we can be saved not by anything that we do. Abraham was a great man. He was a father of all the, the nation of Israel. <coughs> but he could, nothing, he could do nothing to save himself. He had to humble himself right, to believe in the Messiah. So Abraham was counted righteous because he, he believed. Because he believed in the Messiah, to come. And it is the same for us. If we have believed in the person of Jesus Christ, the Son of God that was made flesh in the fullness of time, you know our calendar, uh, BC before Christ and AD Anno Domini, the year of the Lord, before Christ and Anno Domini. This is the pivotal time of human history. You see, even our calendar tells us right, that was the, the most important climax of history right, where God would send His Son. And God wants us to have our eyes open, you see. God wants us to learn, right, to see, to know the Christ so that we may come to know Him and we may receive salvation through Him. Uh, Romans chapter 4 uh, gives to us this truth. So the Apostle Paul declared right, in truth that by grace Abraham was saved. He did not receive salvation by any work 
that merited his salvation. It was all by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ that righteousness was credited to Abraham. He did nothing to earn his salvation. The same for us. We can do nothing to find credit before God. And it must cause us to, you know, to realize, right, uh, to be humbled before God, that, you know, you can do nothing to save yourself. You can do nothing. Because we are sinners through and through. And that is a truth that God wants us to see, you see. Now, you talk to anyone in the street, they would tell you that, hey, I, I didn't kill anybody. Uh, I did not break the law. Uh, I'm not uh, that bad a person, you see. And therefore, if I'm not that bad a person, then how bad can I be? I, in my goodness, I cannot approach God. Uh, that is the, what Paul is trying to help us to see, you see. That indeed, we are not good at all. We are sinners through and through. And God wants us to understand our uh, uh, depraved position before Him, that we are truly, uh, in a sense, we said, dust. Right? Uh, we cannot save ourselves. But God is the one who provided that way of salvation. And therefore, uh, the Lord wants us to know right, the truth concerning how a man is saved. Uh, it is God, it is the God-given means whereby man can escape the judgment of hellfire and receive eternal life. And thank God for the opportunity to share this truth. I, uh, thank God for the opportunity to share this truth. You know, um, I had the opportunity to meet a man uh, by the... by the... Uh, arrangement of God through his doctor and I was asked to go to meet him at the void deck of his home and when I saw him well I saw that this man had a big lump on his face really big lump and I was told that he only had two weeks of life left two weeks of life left. And so it was an urgent uh, situation, urgent of mission. And this is what uh, happened right? in a quiet corner of a fast food restaurant. In the weakness of his sickness, he received the Lord. He realized that he cannot save himself. That lump there is so big, that, you know, he knew that when it, we were told uh, that as it grows bigger, it would block his ability to swallow. So when the swell would grow so much that it would block uh, that, that, that organ that allows him to even swallow and eat, that's it. And that was how critical life was for him. And <clears throat> he realized that, that he, in his weakness, in the weakness of his sickness, he realized that he cannot save himself. And he had to humble himself before God uh, to receive Jesus Christ. Uh, I've never seen him again after that. Because I believe the Lord has did take him home after that. It was a critical moment, a tri critical time. It was the same way God saved Abraham. 
his faith is counted for righteousness. So although he didn't know how he can be saved in the sense that, you know, he's really just waiting, uh, counting the number of days that he has. Right? The growth is fast closing in on him. And, you know, you, you can feel uh, the, the danger that the person is in. Right? The, the mortal danger that the person is in. But you can see also that God granted him faith. And so when he believed, God saved such a man. What a time of rejoicing. He was given the Bible and encouraged to read the Gospel of John. And our prayer is that God will help him, uh, make a way for him uh, to come to church. Well, that was his desire. Abraham in his time, uh, look forward in faith to the coming of Jesus Christ to accomplish his salvation. You see, when God brought Abraham out of Iraq, you know, he was living so comfortably. Iraq was the modern city of those times. You see, life was good. And yet God said to him that he is to bring his family and move 800 miles across the Fertile Crescent into this, across the desert, uh, into this, uh, as it were, no man's land, to fulfill God's purpose. Can you understand the life of faith? Abraham obeyed, you know, and he came out, and God revealed to him that the salvation will come through his descendants. So this was God's plan of salvation. And God wants us to, to know and to receive it. Abraham in his time looked forward in faith to the coming of Jesus Christ to accomplish his salvation. And we look backwards in time to what Jesus did on the cross to win our salvation. What a glorious gospel, freely given, freely received. Romans chapter 4, verse 4 says, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believe on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith was counted for righteousness. Even as David also described, the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. So David gives us the portrait of the man that is blessed of God in Psalm 32. He says, Blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man whom God imputeth not iniquity, meaning that God does not count his sin to his credit. Uh, whatever that he has done that is wrong, God does not count it upon him. And if we have done wrong, you know, you have done wrong, which I believe all of us have, uh, if you have done wrong and you have made mistakes, what is the kind of a heart to a man who has done wrong. Fear, right? Very frightened, right? Because we have done wrong. And we know that whatever a person commits that is wrong, right, there is a consequence to the wrong. There is a price to be paid, in other words. Right? Sin has to be dealt with. And so, for us, to, for us to see and know that, yeah, if we have done wrong, then, you know, there is a penalty, a price to be paid for the wrong, then who is going to pay it? Are we going to pay it ourselves? Ah, so that is a question that 
logically would come to us. And, you know, by our own wisdom, we would think that, yeah, maybe I can do something to save myself. I can do something good to offset uh, the bad that I have done. Right? So logically, you, you would think this way. Right? If I do uh, good, a lot of good, then you know, I can offset the bad. But if you understand the law of uh, sin, you realize that if you have sinned in one point, you have sinned in all, right? If you have broken the law at one point, then what does the law, what does the transgression of the law tell us? That you have to pay for the transgression of, your, of, the, of the law. There is a punishment that comes with the crime, you see. You cannot escape just like that. Ah, then it makes us to think already that what can we do? So if you are the man, you know, that we are speaking about, sir, he has this lump here that is so big, you know, that is so... Uh, atrocious and it's closing in on him, he must be feeling really desperate, right? That if nothing is done for him, that's the end already. And he understood the perils of his life, and the peril that he was in. And God wants us to see the peril that we are in, right? that we are sinners, that we cannot save ourselves. Nothing you do is able to win you salvation. Uh, but God has provided a way. God has provided the way out. The glorious gospel uh, is preached here by the psalmist David, explains the Apostle Paul, when David speaks of the blessing of sins forgiven and reconciliation with God. So you notice uh, there are three words given, there are words given there, uh, the word transgression, sin, and iniquity, right? to describe man's depravity, that you, you cannot, that, that you have done wrong, in other words. Right? The word transgression means a rebellion against God. Right? Sin is measured against God's law, and iniquity is the outworking of sin in a person's life in crooked ways, and therefore, what to do? And you'll see that there are three similar words that are used, forgiven, covered, and imputed, that describe how a man finds justification before God. That means, how can you be acquitted? You have committed a crime. You need a pardon. If not, you're going to be thrown to prison. How can you find the pardon? in order to receive the acquittal for the crime that is committed. And this is what we are speaking about here. All right? And David is saying here right, to us right, that God provided a way. And the psalmist used uh, words of reputation, repetition, of similar in a sense, but different in sound and origin for emphasis. So when we sin against God, our conscience gives us no rest until we repent and submit to God's authority and sovereignty in our life. you find that there will be an inner struggle that is inside us. We don't have peace in the heart until we yield to God and repent of our sins. So the word transgression is from the root word to break or to break with, to break covenant with God is to rebel, to revolt. That's the word to sin. And how can you take away that sin? Right? It's to be forgiven. Right? It's to have one sin taken away. The word there, forgiven, means lifted off. Right? And this word is in the passive, describing uh, that we cannot take away our sins. It is taken away from us. Right? It's in the passive voice. Right? The active voice means that the subject right, does the action. But the passive voice right, is, is such that the action is done on the, on the subject. Right? So here uh, is described 
how sin is to be taken away by an external party, God. Right? And you remember in Pilgrim's Progress, uh, how the burden on Christian's back was lifted from him when he came to the cross. Right? He was, he's, was having a great burden on his back. And how that burden was lifted out from him. Uh, that's the burden of sin. So, you know, I was speaking to an elderly man together with his wife. Husband is a believer. Wife is not a believer. And wife said, oh, I cannot. I have this. You know, we, we gave the, the, uh, the Bible verse, uh, all uh, that all who are labor and are heavy laden can come to Christ. And she said, I am the one who is heavy laden. I'm the one who is very burdened because I cannot forgive my husband. I, uh, she said, that burden is so great. I cannot forgive. Ah. Well, we said that uh, the burden in our heart can be lifted off, taken away from us uh, only when we would surrender ourselves to God. Uh, surrender ourselves to God and say to God that, God, I cannot handle it anymore. Uh, that hatred is taking a toil on me and putting such a great burden on my back that I cannot hold it. But God wants a way back for me. And so here the Lord tells us right, that He will make a way for us. God will uh, be with us to help us. And so here the, uh, the, the, the Lord wants us to see and understand uh, uh, that uh, sins need to be forgiven. And the word sin means missing the mark against the standard of God's word, right, as delineated in the Ten Commandments. Right? To miss a step or footing or to stumble, hence to err, to go astray, to trespass. Every departure from God's law is therefore a missing of the mark and trespass against God. And this word, so how can sin be taken away? This word, cover. Uh, uh, your sin be covered. The word there uh, is again in the passive. Being covered, uh, the action of covering is done uh, on the subject, the sinner. We cannot cover our sins. The Bible tells us that our sins are covered by the righteousness earned on our behalf by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, that is the way by which God saves us. Christ Himself, God Himself has to take that burden for our sins so that at the end, well, uh, the sin is not ascribed or credited or counted upon us. And God wants us to just take hold of this way by which God has ascribed for our Bird, sin burden to be taken away. Uh, this is the good news of the gospel, that by faith in the person of Jesus Christ who has died for us, washed away our sins, uh, we can find salvation and forgiveness through Him. And you remember the, the great joy of the lame man who was at the gate beautiful when Peter and John uh, went at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. He saw the lame man there, uh, so miserable, uh, begging. And G Peter said to him, Silver and gold have I none. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Wow, he rose up and walked. And he believed this is the way of salvation that God has given to him. And he was gloriously saved. And so we are saved by grace, the unmerited favour of God and sins are forgiven 
and we are reconciled with God right, by what His Son had done, Jesus Christ. Abraham was saved looking forward to the coming of the Son, and we are saved looking backward to the Christ that has come 2,000 years ago.